Ladies and gentlemen, we are live on the Joe Cronin Show on YouTube. This is the Joe Cronin Show. We're getting ready for full gear. AEW full gear wrestling news up the yin yang for the last couple days. Come on over to the Joe Cronin Show if you're here. We're getting sloppy and getting ready. As we uh, end my other stream that I was on. And we get ready. Uh, we can't... We can't do this without the real intro, though, so I got I to gotta go pull that up. I had a big problem with my computer. Some people know about it, but I, I, I deleted, like, thousands of files by accident today. The goddamn thing, like, it was... Oh, God, it was a nightmare. Uh, we got all the new donations down below. The new donations. If you haven't checked those out yet, please go give them a check. You may enjoy them. I think you will. Tons of wrestling news to talk about right now. Files by accident. What's up to the chat? We are officially live. And lots to explain. What's going on, chat? Hey, hey, hey. Joe, if you're listening, you stupid fuck. He looks like a one of those guys that from Long Island that wants to be a white rapper, but he's 30-something years old, lives in his parents' basement with the droopy cap and the whatever, but he thinks he's Howard Stern, and he's got a cool way of talking in the microphone, uh, and he's a shock jock or whatever, and somehow or another he accumulates followers on the on Twitter is fucking pathetic so please nobody listen to anything involving a guy named Joe Cronin because it's just so fucking sad. This, 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 this is the most mature audience's only shit you've ever heard. Period. From Boston. From Boston. Broadcasting all over the world. The world. Send the soy boys home. Cause we ain't gonna sugarcoat shit. Drop down, I'm give it to you. This. This is, this is the Joe Cronin Show. Now, now, here's Joe here's Cronin. Joe.
everybody. What's uh, what's going on, everybody? Let's get into Out of Nowhere. It's episode, I don't know, because I didn't write in the title, but I'll figure it out later and I'll add it to episode like 210 or 11 or something. I don't know. It's one of those episode numbers. I'm not really sure. We are here. We are live with my co-host, the man with the gigantic bowels. His name is Jake DeMarco. What's going on, Jake DeMarco? It's episode something. What's going on? 215, baby. Two fi- you know, I don't even know my own shit. <laughs> We're on 215. That's 148 right. more episodes than JD. We're rocking through them. Something like that. It's a guess like that. Live from Boston. No, I'm just kidding. In Connecticut. Uh, so much to go over tonight. Oh, I mean, boy. Rating, neither show was even in the top 50 thanks to the election. Whoops. Uh, WWE future plans and things building for Survivor Series. We obviously have full gear this weekend. We will get to our predictions for that pay-per-view eventually. Lots of little AEW news and uh, news and rumors coming out about a bunch of different things. So a lot to talk about tonight. Hell of a hell of a stream we just had. If you guys didn't see it, make sure you yeah, check it out on the, the Corrupted Nation YouTube. Dude, we were, you know, day three of election coverage. I can see how the election stuff did better because we're just killing the election stuff. Is killing it. We had 7,000 people. At some point, tune into what we did earlier. I mean, like, crazy. I mean, wrestling is just taking a big, 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 big back seat. I mean, that's just that's what's happened. I mean, that's why I don't feel as bad as about the numbers. But now that it's over, yeah, people are gonna be back into like, oh, gotta watch wrestling because you know it's nothing else to do. How's everybody uh, doing? I think people will get back into it the more the fans come back. Yes, I agree. We got a championship belt on the line tonight for all you suckers out there. Who's going to have the top donation? The JCS Digital Championship is on the line. So please, uh, when you want to drop them, make sure you guys ask a question about wrestling or a comment about wrestling. If you want to ask non-wrestling stuff tonight, we'll do it. All right? We'll, we'll, if you want to yeah. say something about life or whatever, bring it to the table. We'll talk about it. There's Jake, so much going on. How could we not address it? Maxwell, you know, Maxwell uh, 7, Jake, wants to know, what are your favorite colors? My favorite colors? I love green. That's my favorite color. All shades of green. But That's fucking crazy. Always love green. Did you know that was my favorite color too? Or? I did not. I did I actually that's the one thing I didn't know about you. Wow. I, I would have thought yours was blue. So Wow. No, it's green. And you know what's funny? What's what's what's, cor- what's, cor- what's your wife's favorite color? She loves purple. Purple people eater. Um my Leah, her favorite color is green. Is it? So, yeah. Wow, you both have the same favorite color. You know, people usually who think who have the color green have like the similar personality type. So I've heard that if you have the same favorites, you have the same, you know, type it's, mindset. It's a certain personality trait. Yeah, green's uh it's supposed to mean something about being like smart or something. I that's clearly not with me. I didn't, you know. I got a nice I got a big GED on the wall. Um, but yeah, no. You don't give yourself enough credit. Look at the empire we have. Uh, it's all you, baby. Something. It's something. Purple Dildo says Lewis Money in the chat. Joe read the chat. Okay. Trying to. Shout out to the chat. Spaz Phoenix and uh, Jake tore it up earlier on the Spaz Phoenix podcast. Getty Lee Owls knows uh, was with us earlier. Thanks for being there. What's up, man? How was the chat doing? Hey, man, I love you guys. Good to, good to hear from you, man. Everybody that hit me up on Patreon, thank you for that. We had fun on Patreon the other night with me and Jesse with, uh, I don't know why I'm pointing at you. I'm just going to point at you like, oh, let, you go. let me tell you something. The reptilians are going to kill everybody anyway. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, but no, we had fun last night after dark. It was a, it was an after dark after dark late at night on Patreon. It's a lot of fun. Okay, Jake, hit me with the first wrestling story. Uh, we're going right into the ratings because that's a really interesting <gasps> bit of conundrum here. I mean, the fact that they, they did as well as they did shocked me because they still didn't place. So that just means that there were millions more Americans tuned into anything else but wrestling. I mean, we figured with the election coverage that would be happening, but I'm surprised that the the views held on even as high as they did. AEW had 717,000 viewers. NXT brought in 610,000 viewers. So they both kind of stayed, you know, towards the lowest of the lows, but they didn't break any records here. I thought it might be a bit abysmal for both shows, but thankfully that wasn't the case. What was the AEW rating again? The AEW rating was 717,000. The week before, they had 781. They won't go down, though. They, like, refused. AEW refuses to go below 700. Yeah, and NXT doesn't fall below 6, it seems. You know, they're at 610. The week before, 
Halloween Havoc, they were at 876. So really you can't go by that one. The week before they had 651. So both shows lost a, close to the same amount. Right. If if you're going by, you know, a normal week and not a special show. Jeez. I mean, but that's they they still did pretty pretty decent and about the same in the uh, you know, highly sought after 18 to 49 demographic. AEW brought in a 0. 0.3 uh-huh. and NXT had a 0. 0.14. So, not far off from what we had the week before. Week before it was exactly a point three and a point one six, so very close to the same. So still the same people tuned in, just just a bit less. Yeah, it's good to see that they don't crash. Like they don't that AEW doesn't crash land down and just shit. Right, that's the good news. That AEW doesn't crash down and then just shit. So um, that's the good news with AEW there. Um, trying to think of something that happened. Oh, we did the so the media call happened today. I was on the media call, and you guys hopefully you all heard that. Um, it was good. It was interesting. I didn't get my question answered, but it was still good to be there and good to hear it and hear what Cody has to say. And, you know, they ba- he basically said a lot of the stuff that I thought anyway, you know, about managers, the title, what they're doing. I kind of wanted to know what the atmosphere was going to be like at Daly's place. Tony Khan did say, it's probably in your story notes, Tony Khan did say that about a thousand fans are going to be there. Yes, yes, full for gear. Saturday's Full Gear show, which is great. You know, that's about 150 to 200 more than what they've been having. So that's, that's good that they're able to add in a bit more and they feel they can do it safely. And as we talked about during the week, they're also ramping up, uh, you know, health provisions to, to be safer on the medical side of things for Full Gear. Not only can the referees speak to each other now to, to Gorilla and back and forth with a two-way radio that they've been equipped with, <laughs> Um, so this way they have like direct access, as I said, to gorilla or the doctors on hand, but then they're also going to have, uh, the concussion experts in, uh, the Daly's place this weekend as well. So crazy. I mean, yeah, that Chris Nowinski is going to blow them all. Um, <laughs> he might, and, they, and see, one they of the don't big need, things, dude, they don't need Chris Nowinski to talk to them about concussions. They need people to tell them when they need to like react to injuries in the ring. Who gives a like, well? What? I think that's one of the things that they're they're working on addressing this weekend. It seems I from know. how I, how is I've he gonna taken do it? Tony's quotes recently, it seems like they're they're trying to address the issues that they've been criticized for, and most of that comes to the, the recent treatment of Alex Reynolds when he was unconscious in the ring. Right. Yeah, I think that that was a big deal. And I don't, but I, I even, you don't need Chris Nowinski though, is what I'm trying to like, I'm trying to say like, you don't need him to come in to tell no, you no, that you there just was need a problem. To be more hypervigilant and aware that, Hey, if someone's injured, we, yeah. we need to handle this better. Absolutely. But yeah. No, have I, more I can't information and, and be better, you know, informed of those things. I, I don't think that hurts. I'm going to hit you with another one that you already know about, about Jackson being injured. Yeah, um, he did provide an injury update. He said, I appreciate everyone's concern about my injury. However, I have indeed been medically cleared by my doctor to participate in Saturday's match against the Boar Horseman. Throwing a little dig there. So he said, thank you for the support, Matt. F the revival. And uh, I'm glad that he seems so ready, willing, and able. But from from what we're hearing, I mean, it's not a great outlook for him. His, uh, you know, ACL is thinning. And Ooh. that's the same thing that happened to Rey Mysterio. He had to go and get uh, stem cell treatments oh, done man. to He's, improve that. So. Yeah, that's not good. That sucks. I mean, is probably is going to have to have something done, man, eventually. The way they move, dude, the, what they do in the ring to themselves, I mean, they're going to be just so fucked. I mean, but people used to say that about um, the Rock and Roll Express or whatever, and look at them running around now. You yeah, know? I mean, we've seen them take moves recently and a few bumps here and there so any, I, I mean surgeries have come a long way in sports medicine that's for sure the only problem that that really is the big issue is the, the stipulation you know if you're not a hundred percent in this match and they've made the the surrounding storyline really be about the fact that hey if you don't win these titles you never have a shot again that, right that really is quite the predicament they've booked themselves into it's like yeah I mean, I, i'm not I know that I don't really like... It's like, dude, so you guys are going to say again that, oh, you know, oh, we're... If we don't win, we're not going to challenge again. It's like, Cody already did that. Why are you doing it now? And it almost sounded like on the media call that Cody kind of said that to them. Like, why we... Why do that? You know, yeah. he, he didn't even sound too keen on it. Like, I did that, and that was a kind of a pain in myself into a corner. He sort of said that. 
And he um, doubled down too, saying that he still won't challenge for the AEW championship. But he did, as you said, he made it sound like it was not a regret, but something that should have been thought over better. So the the, uh, the theory, you know, the theory out there. What's that? The theory is that he is at some point someday going to like get in a fight and be in an intense rivalry with somebody who is the champion. And then they're like, you know, you'd like to take this belt off me or whatever. And he, and he, it's going to be something like where he's like, well, that was, I said that, but that was under, uh, when I was Cody and now legally in AAW, I'm Cody Rhodes or something like that. But Cody Rhodes never said he wouldn't challenge for that belt, you know, or something like that. I don't know. That's a goofy thing, but I mean, that's, I, yeah, I mean, that is an interesting theory, but Cody did say during the media call today that yeah. he's not going to be using his last name in the ring, but that well, doesn't mean he won't use it well, in the future. It could be a downplay too, but it's true that it's true he did say that, and I actually had a question for him about that, and then when he said that, I was like, oh, and I X'd out my question again because he was <laughs> like, because I was going to say, yeah. hey, people think that you, you know, jer- like Cody, that you basically like pretended like you didn't care, but you really wanted the name back and now you have it back. You know, it was that the game plan all along. Are you, you know, were you really looking forward to having it back? Were you just trying to play it cool? And then someone else already asked that basically, and then he or he just like offered it almost and said, "No, I uh, yeah, kind of. I'm not using it." It was brought up, but he he was you know more forthcoming. And the interesting thing is, I don't think he really minded not having his name for wrestling. He said he held no ill will with WWE at all for for them doing it because it was just a business thing. Um, really. I think his his desire for it is outside of AEW. He's doing that go big show on mm-hmm. you know the channel for TNT, and it's just hey, Cody's here. Well, if you're not watching wrestling, you don't know who Cody is, right? And it doesn't take long. If you're a wrestling fan and you see Cody for the first time, you could ask somebody, or they're going to say Cody. You know, so you, you get the lineage, you get the story. Outside of wrestling, it's Cody. Who the hell is Cody? Yeah, that was Cody. At least, at least. So now that he has his name back there, I think that's what he was really hoping for. Somebody old might say like, "Oh, like the Dusty Rhodes is that like his kid or something?" You know, or at least that, or like somebody younger yeah. might be like, "Oh, Cody Rhodes. Yeah, I remember him. I watched. I stopped watching WWE in two thousand eight, but I remember. I remember Cody Rhodes. Like, so they remember that he and then and he it's, was. It's Stardust. easier to say Cody Rhodes than oh, Cody, the guy from wrestling or the guy from AEW or you know the. The former WWE star, anything like that, you know, just to have that instant recognition. You don't say, you know, if you say Steve Austin, you're not going, oh, the former wrestler, Steve Austin. You just know Stone Cold was a wrestler. So at least to have that type of, you know, value to your name, I think that's what he's he's really going after. Yeah. Yeah. I think the lineage uh, it's, it's not clear. That. If, yeah. If WWE ever had like any type of non compete clause as part of their deal to give up the copyright. So some people think that that might be the case that he, he, can't use it in AEW yet, but he'll be able to soon, and that's why he's saying that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I mean that would be interesting to to ask him about, but I, I'm not positive, and I don't think he would he would be as open with that. But we'll see. Well, I um, let me go to the donations now, guys. If you want to ask a question tonight, give that love in super chat. This channel actually has fucking super chat. Super chat down below, and if you guys want to become a member, hit the join button down below, become a member. You get icons of Jake, me, my wife, and a middle finger, and a bunch of weird stuff down below. You get those icons. Plus, you get the green boldness on your name so I can see you a little bit better in the chat. And uh, if you want to donate in the description box down below, Streamlabs, Twitch alerts, links are down there. And if you want to see what the donations do, and you don't normally donate ever... If you expand the description box, there's just tons of different donations, plus all the new ones. The new 1999 Karen, there's a bunch of new donations. There's other ones, old ones, whatever the fuck. Have some fucking fun and uh, steal your neighbor's credit card. It's a, it's a lot of fun. Uh, or do a super chat down below. Those work as well. Some super chats trigger some things. And everybody in the chat will see your super chat and they'll start masturbating to it. It'll be unbelievable. And I'll jerk super off too. Chat. Randy Viper coming in from New Zealand. Hell yes, just got your t-shirt. Fuck yeah! It already got there to New Zealand? Holy shit! Didn't you just order that two weeks ago? Or a week ago? Damn. Like, that was pretty quick, man. I gotta order some more COVID masks. Uh, Check out Teespring for my shirts. The link is also down below there. Shirts, sweatshirts, wintertime, guys. All the JCS sweatshirts, all the Turkey Club sweatshirts. Um, Good sweatshirts by Teespring. There's a couple different quality ones, an expensive one to a low-grade one. Whatever you want to do. I mean, you know, most people go, there's no low-grade ones. There is a low-grade one. It's not a very good one. But you can get it for, like, 29 bucks. But the good one is, like, 40 bucks, and it's and it's a good one. I like the good one. 
But the mid card and the lower ones, they're not the best, but they're cheap. But that's why they're cheap. But the good, but the good one is good at least. So at least if you spend the forty, at least you're getting that. that at least that's good, you know. Because the other ones, though, I'm not gonna. <laughs> yeah. I'm not gonna lie. The the cheap sweatshirt is a little fucked up. The Mad Scots man is here at four thirty eight a.m. Let's go. Let's go, brother. Let's go. Vince McMahon's nuts smell like money. <laughs> Give me money. I'm Alex Jones and I'm flipping out right now. He's Alex Jones is having a parade right now. Uh, thank you, uh, Vince McMahon's nuts smell like money. Man, it's 4.30 a.m. I don't know how you guys do it over there. Crazy. I don't know how you guys do it. It's crazy. Hit that like button. We appreciate button. the love, though. Hell yeah. Yeah, baby. Give me to 100 yeah, likes sure. over there. Let's get to 100 likes, and we'll uh, jerk each other around. Um, We've been talking about it for a while. A lot of people, this is probably the biggest news story as far as full gear goes. Uh-huh. Uh, will Sting be there? I mean, the, the speculation is running rampant. There was a 30-second teaser trailer that AEW released, and in the commercial, Miro at one point says, who is going to create the next big moment? And they keep teasing that, you know, one big surprise after another. So I'm not sure if that, you know, they went ahead and, and kind of dropped a bit of a surprise. Some people think like, oh, that's that's saying that Sting will definitely be there. I don't know if they're just trying to normally entice people and say, hey, because there was no mention of the surprise on Dynamite. Right. It's just in this one trailer. Dave Meltzer seems to to think, you know, with his remarks, he says that they gave up their big shocking surprise. He gave it I don't, they gave it up? Yeah, by having this trailer saying, like, you know, oh, what's coming Saturday? I don't think that's the case though. Yeah, but you know, we're in a time right now where sometimes that kind of works. Remember when they gave away Bischoff and then the ratings blew up? They were mad about that though. They didn't want yeah, Bischoff. Yeah, well that to be was revealed, some so. what NXT it, it worked in their favor, no doubt, but that's why I'm I'm always or maybe it did hesitant. maybe maybe the ratings would have spiked when people were like Eric Bischoff's on AEW and you know because yeah. organically drawn in more fans that that weren't you know already in on the surprise true I mean that's right. that's a possibility we don't know for sure but it seems like it worked in their favor because it was so highly rated and regarded but Meltzer feels like because they said you know what will be the next big shocking moment in this teaser it kind of gives away that that big something is happening and, and everyone's kind of putting two and two together with Sting. I, I I like Sting too, but bringing him in now, I don't really, you know, oh, he's going to be what, on, on Darby Allen's side? It sounds interesting at first, but when you really play it out, I don't know what role they would have for him. And it, it already feels like at times they kind of repeat some WCW storylines. I, I don't want to see it go that way. So if they had a good place in it and a solid story set up for him, you know, that's something that was that would be worthwhile. I, I'd be all for it, but just to have the legend appear in AEW briefly, uh, yeah, I don't know. Well, this sat- he can't wrestle, Kenny. Didn't he retire from his neck injury? Wasn't that the issue? That's what I thought. Yeah, yeah. So I thought he was done. I don't know. So what, I, I, I don't mean, know with him going. not being able to wrestle, I'm, I'm not sure what ultimate purpose he'll serve. By the way, Saturday night it's going to be a big night. We're going to be doing AEW reaction review Saturday night right here. And then, yes, then Corrupted Podcast is going down on Patreon. So it's going to be a big night Saturday. And last Saturday was crazy with Among Us. So, um, man, I had so much fun. We had like 5,000 views on that. JB, D, Moon, uh, Jake. Yeah, everybody Maine, stopped by. Leah, Awandi. The list goes on. Nerdy. Just so many people played with us. It was so fun, man. We had a blast. That game is retarded, but it was fun as shit. So there, <laughs> I got to teach you guys eventually how to play. <laughs> yeah, we weren't really <laughs> playing. Watching, I was like, oh, God. Yeah, we don't know what we're doing. We'll catch the replay tomorrow, but cheap plug. AEW preview with Gweppo tomorrow after SmackDown and some more super Woo! sexy content with Jake next week. Spaz Penis. Uh, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. Spaz Penis podcast. The Spaz Phoenix podcast. Looking hot, baby. Looking yeah, we broke hot. down some of the NXT women's division, and we're talking about uh, you know just just things that we enjoy, things that we think could be better. But but we're we're breaking down each female there individually over the course of three podcasts. So I it's, it's really in depth. And for those that really like you know the more statistical side of things and, and really in depth, it's it's really enjoyable. I got a guy who wrote a book called The Intuitive Man. He's coming on the show this week on my other show. That's Hell gonna yeah. be up. That's fire. I got the. Uh, uh, somebody from the uh, Anthony Cumia show is coming on. That's going to be a big thing. He's a good, great guy. We're going to talk a lot of shit. Um, 
you'll you'll love that guy. He's a funny fucking comedian. Uh, we got a lot Is that of people. C. Paul Henry that you're talking about? Yeah. Oh yeah. So you read? Did you read it or did you just look it up? No, I didn't read it, but I'm looking it up yeah, now. I got, so. I got Paul C. Paul Henry coming on. He's gonna be. He's a really interesting guy. Um, good book. I read it. I don't read much. I read his book, and then this other guy's coming on. Just a lot of shit's coming on this week. It's gonna be good. Uh, as I start up the uh, one-on-one show, uh, we may have one or two people on with me, but usually it'll just be me and a guest. And so it's going to be all people, talented people. It's going to be a big show, new show, new format type of deal. I think you guys will like that. Uh, just trying to figure out where I want to put it. It's definitely going to go up on iTunes. Breaking news, Philadelphia police investigating alleged plot to attack convention center. Oh, shit's going down. Damn. Um, Jesus. Um, also, uh... Oh, yeah, just hit me with the next uh, wrestling. Spaz Phoenix, thank you for the $5 Canadian. Spaz Phoenix, uh, appreciate it, brother. Oh, Canada, our home and native land. True he knows what it's all about. So Miro Fuck uh, me. Is, is pretty sure he knows why, you know, he finally revealed why WWE released him. Oh. And I thought this was kind of interesting. I mean, he, he had already asked for his release a year rape. prior. It's but- definitely rape. That's what I was going with. I was like, damn it, Patterson's on the run again. But no, it wasn't the case. He, 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 Miro says, I was getting some of the boys around because we were not okay with how everybody was treated in the pandemic situation. Many of us were felt scared to go to work. And once again, it was probably 10 of us talking. Somebody leaked it to the office. From us 10 people that were talking, somebody leaked it to the office and to the dirt sheets. And what? once that happened, I knew right away that they were going to fire me because they're going to blame it all on me. Of course, because I'm the guy, but it doesn't matter. And he said that he lashed for five minutes out at WWE's head talent relations, Mark Carano, as he was unhappy at things that had happened with him in the past with WWE. Hmm. Um, He said that he wanted to protect his fellow superstars with the pandemic, and he was very, very angry. So good on him for standing up for himself. And it sucks that that's, you know, the ultimate reason as to why he got let go. But it Uh certainly shows more character. Yeah, I mean, I guess. Uh, I mean, uh, it's hard to say with anything, you know. I mean, what real reasons really could be, and whatever else. But yeah, I mean, they weren't using him. They 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 had him on the way out anyway. So any reason was a good enough reason for them, obviously. But you knew Vince was was certainly not going to take to anybody talking against what he was doing. What so. what is? Let me ask you this, because fuck Miro, you know Miro. I don't know why, but uh, I totally agree with what you're saying. But like, someone sent me this. What's this WWE Undefeated game? Uh, it's a new game for iOS and Apple devices that's coming out soon. Oh. So it's 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 going to be just like what we got recently, but it'll be multiplayer and you know in the same vein. It's cartoon like animated. You get to collect wrestlers and moves. I guess from the trailer I saw. Um, it, it's just like the the most recent game. I can't remember the name of that, whichever one that came out that wasn't two K twenty, and uh, it just it looks more child friendly. But it's a mobile game. That's it. You know, typical touch screen stuff. Nothing okay. big deal. Yeah, I saw a lot of people kind of rumbling about that, and I was like, hey, I wonder what the big deal is with this. Give game. me a hell yeah! Give me a hell yeah! Hell yeah! Joe just hell updated yeah. a brand new clip. You won't get banned showing it, and it's quick. Please show you Jake and all will laugh your ass off, trust me. Then after watching my lastest clip, then watch the teaser trailer to Vince McMahon Netflix stock. Whoa. That's it, Battlegrounds. <laughs> that is going to be really you, cool. Club. Listen, everybody, if you guys have Instagram and you got your phone handy right now, you got to go follow Botch Club. I'm on there. Everybody's on there. Their clips are amazing. They've got clips every day, tons of clips, parody clips. We're going to show some of them in a little bit. Good shit. Uh, the chat's going off. Melissa Solers, what's up, Melissa? Uh, Miro, uh, Lana going through tables. Yeah, it's ridiculous. It's kind of funny, but now it's like, are they really going to try to make Lana important? Well, you know what? Because I was doing all the AW news to begin with, but I have an update on Lana. Let me. Yeah, find it no, in my I mean you can keep open. going with the AW. We can get to the Lana later. It's okay. All right, we'll get to the Lana afterwards. Yeah, so, go to the rest of the um, AW. Yeah, so Tully uh, is actually Tully. You know, trying to be the best manager he can be. And he's going to file a lawsuit against AEW. This is all storyline. <laughs> because he is no longer allowed at ringside for the championship tag team match this Saturday at Full Gear. He's been barred from ringside, so he has a prepared statement. AEW tweeted it out yesterday. It's very funny, but, you know, his dry wit, um, it's great. <laughs> so, you know, 
they say the milk is already spilled. There's no use in crying about things now. You know, they're like, it's, uh, <laughs> they, they, they basically, you know, they, they continue to put themselves over, but it is entertaining. But now we know no Tully. So that, that's an interesting, uh, factor for him not to be involved in the match because he's been so prevalent in keeping the boys winning time and time again. He's been involved in the finish one way, shape or form. That's crazy. I mean, uh, Tony Khan also went ahead and said that Eddie Kingston would be a great AEW champion. And everybody oh, yeah. said, no shit. Right. <laughs> yeah. He said, since he came in this summer, he's been one of the top people in AEW. He's one of the top people in wrestling. He's very effective as a wrestler. He's very effective as a speaker and a leader. And I think he could be a great champion for us. So him giving that quote oh, yeah. so candidly on the Unrestricted podcast, you know, it, it makes you wonder, could they be considering... Uh, you know, him for, for a run with the belt against Moxley at this point. Yeah, I mean, it, it, we said this too the other day, like, man, that guy, that guy, if he had the world title, would seem like a badass. Like, he'd be great. Like, he'd probably be better than Moxley, for God's sake, because he just, oh, yeah. God I mean, damn, man. Moxley is up there, but I, I just, I love Kingston so much on the mic that yeah, he no matter who either. he faced, I think he can make it feel special. Yeah, and he doesn't need the belt, but, you know, he's just going to be... I always hate that, like, for, sometimes for when you say no, against Moxley at this point. Oh, my stream was playing. I was like, what the fuck? Why am I hearing <laughs> you again? Do you think Sting's going to go to AEW? I'm, every time I start to convince myself that he'll show up Saturday, I, I think of two reasons that he won't be there. Right. And I, I'm going mostly off of, you know, what he said in the past, but then I'm thinking, all right, AEW wasn't around at that time when he was giving these types of, you know, interviews when he left the business and, and retired. So maybe he is feeling better. Maybe he, he does want to be, you know, it, it, I could seemingly see him there. I just don't really know what they're going to do with him and utilize him with. Some people said, make him a GM. Some people said, you know, he could be a great manager, put him with Darby Allen, but you know, I, I don't know. So, but hopefully if they do find a way, they, they planned out something well with him. I, I'd want it to be something meaningful than rather He'd just probably the waste Cody. WWE did. Sting's here, and then yeah. nothing came of it for ages to the Mania match, and then that was a disaster. Um, What about him? Who, who would he wrestle, like Cody? See, I don't think he'd wrestle. That's the thing. Right. But if he was to wrestle anybody, I would say Cody, because Cody would probably be the safest person to work with, or one of the safest. Maybe he'd be a referee. He could be like the special referee in a match. Special enforcer, maybe. Like if they were having their their type of war games match, I could picture him being like an enforcer for that, or you know, he's just outside that, with that his suit sting. Well, him coming with the baseball bat, being that that ultimate security, that's just something that I I picture him to to be doing. So well, yeah, he's outside the ring with like a bat, you know, ready to beat somebody. Yeah, a lot of people are saying Darby Allen heel Darby. I mean, they they kind of have Darby in in kind of a. a in between thing like many of the stars are you know he's not quite face he's not exactly heel so it could work yeah i think so i mean i don't know if i'd, I'd like him as a general manager after what i've seen of him in impact i don't know if i'd be thrilled with that no i like the idea of, of tony khan just running things from the back and not being seen yeah please so. don't go there please don't go there oh my god but as we discussed the other day, Tony Khan, you know, I had heard that they were trying to make him uh, be more, you know, in the public eye because they do eventually want to have him on TV in more of a prevalent role. And from, you know, where I was reading it, it seemed credible. Again, take it with a grain of salt. But if you notice, they dropped his name a lot on Dynamite the other day. And since then, he's been appearing quite a lot. And I know they're also promoting the pay-per-view as well. So it could just be for that. But it is very coincidental. Yeah, it's very kind of weird. And they and he just they WWE just dropped him, so Yeah. Now WWE is also reaching out to a bunch of wrestlers, apparently, several of them who have appeared on AEW Dark. And WWE is just apparently keeping close eye on what happens on Dark. Anytime they have new people that they think they can procure from AEW, they seem to be hiring again. So uh WWE started signing new trainees for their performance center once again and the contracts that they're offering they're not high dollar deals that they were throwing around earlier this year but it's still a good amount of money and having wwe's interest you know obviously is is what a lot of people want in the end so yeah um but 
I don't know, man. I they they just keep making money too. Like so, it's like oh yeah. The, again, record breaking quarter. They they've pulled in so much money, so they they can offer you know small contracts to people and just tie them up, so AEW can't utilize them in the meantime. River that, that's whistle. Pretty much what it feels like they're doing. Thank you, River Whistle, for subbing to the channel, man. Poor River Whistle, a cerveza. Thank you, brother. Have a drink. I did last week on Monetize This. I got fucked up. Oh, no, it was another, It was uh, during the gaming stream, actually. Super Chat Party. I don't see Moxley saying I quit. I don't see either one of them saying they quit. That's the thing. I don't see. I can't see Moxley's character the way he's been built, or Eddie's saying I quit. I. That's what makes this such a spectacle to me. I mean, they're they're going to have to kill each other. And if they said they're trying to top his match with Omega last year, that's why they have the extra medical on staff. There is no time limit. From what I read, there's no time limit. They have to go ahead and you know have a, a conclusion to the match. Someone has to say I quit, and they're not counting. From what I understood originally. Someone like being choked and passed out. You actually have to verbally say the words "I quit." We're pro so we're like we're probably gonna get, um, like a stoppage. We're gonna the, get, the we're, Rock Mankind where they do the I recorded mean, yeah, I like quit I, thing. Quit, I quit, I quit, <laughs> I quit, and like it doesn't even look like he's saying it. That was the worst, and they never explained that either. That always pissed me off. I, it was supposed to be bad, I believe, intentionally, but I, I had heard that in a in a shoot promo well i'd always ages ago. i always thought it was going to be like somebody in the back played it to to make him because he wasn't going to give up and they were afraid they're going to get sued or something it was supposed to be the rock played the audio and had it set up but they but never did that they just went with yeah, yeah that's he quit yeah eventually they just kind of changed it and it was, uh, <laughs> it was weird <laughs> they so, scrapped on their own story but. so will they go with that type of thing throws the towel in type of thing someone's going to throw a towel in or are they going to yeah go does with does the butcher the blade you know, all them come out, uh, the Lucha Bros, since they're with Eddie, and they're, they're, you know, he's lying there in a bloody heap, half dead, and then, then they throw in the towel and say, I quit for him. You know, is that a possibility? Who knows? That's why I, I to, to predict this, it's racking my brain. Yeah, I don't fucking know, man, but it's it's weird. It's I think that, or they could go with the Bret Hart ending, right, with uh, Stone Cold Bret Hart ending. Um, but they just and they just kind of did a lot. But of But they don't right? want to do the pass out angle where, where anybody chokes out because that's what they were in one of the promos. They were talking about, you know, I I didn't say I quit. They it just choked it. me out. So yeah. And then on top that, of that, that's been done. And then you, then do you want to go with the whole like, oh, we stopped it because it was dangerous, but we just did that with Matt Hardy in his match in real life, like kind of. So well, they let that match finish. So <laughs> yeah. So but, that but that's what I mean. Like so that match didn't fit. That match finished, but this one yeah, won't. but this one couldn't. So exactly, that's like, the problem. So. This is really this is a really tough one. Like I don't know how the fuck. That's why it is so interesting. What in the fuck are they gonna yeah. do? I mean, oh shit! Black sense matters. Oh my god! Joe, did you ever notice that Tony from Revere sounds like Ralph Marchio, aka Daniel Russo? <laughs> yeah, he yeah. kind of does. Yeah, I know. A little bit. I noticed a little bit. Black Sense Matters, man. Thank you for the $10. Thank you very much, man, for the $10 and donating that. Thank you, bro. Um, Yeah, that's a great point. I didn't know he sounded. I don't know. Did Some you see people me? said, you know, like Daniel Price had mentioned, yeah, Pax got heat with both Kingston and Moxley and Kayfabe. You know, maybe there could be something that Pax shows up. Since we didn't see him on Dynamite, we just saw the promo, which was incredible. I, I We didn't really get into that much during the review. Yeah. But that was so cool with him seeing himself, you know, all over the place and being isolated so long that he's lost his mind. So the bastard's now crazy. Oh, that's truly sadistic. I can't wait to see what they do with him. I, I wasn't as excited, but I like the idea that he was, I guess, you know. I'm excited, yeah. I'm I'm genuinely happy to see him return finally, so... Just like Pete Dunne, you know, came back the week before, and that's been interesting. I'm glad people are finally able to get back, you know, out of wherever they were locked into. Yeah, get out of that lockdown, man. Yeah, I, I, I do like that he's back, though. I'm happy. Yeah, people are saying UK's in lockdown, but I thought he was already here. Well, we'll see. You never know. With everything going on, I mean, <laughs> this country next week could be all locked down. <laughs> we have no idea. Take it day by day. Uh, speaking of which, as I was mentioned before with Lana, I, I, I don't know why, but they still want to push her. According to WrestlingNews.co, uh, their WWE source said that Lana 
she's going to get back at Nia Jax by putting her through a table. Oh. And this source is adamant that Vince McMahon is not holding a grudge. There is no heat on her because of her husband signing with AEW. And that this is the story they had planned. They wanted to make her a sympathetic baby face. And over time, she will get her revenge. Does anyone give a shit if Lana puts Nia Jax through a table? I mean, in the moment, you're like, oh, that's funny. But no one cares to the extent that, oh, we're happy for Lana that she got her revenge. There's no one sympathetic towards her. There, no one has any compassion towards Lana no, at yeah, all. Nobody... She went from a heel to a, a somewhat quasi kind of face back to the heel cheating on Rusev. And now we're supposed to cheer for her. Yeah, nobody cares. I mean, we just saw her cheating on her husband and leave him and marry Bobby Lashley and then get divorced and all that crazy dramatic nonsense for months. And now we're supposed to cheer her and feel bad for her. And it's not like she's having these hard felt battles in the ring where you're like, Oh my God, she left it all out there. That gauntlet match was so impressive. We have to be no, like, like people really fell in love with Kofi after he gave a hell of a fighting performance. You don't get that with Lana, so I don't know <laughs> what she could do to offer anything worthwhile for anybody. And and it's not all on her, unfortunately, but yeah. Yeah, I don't I don't even want her in the WWE at this point. Just get go with Miro or whatever and go blow each other in AEW or whatever. It's, just, it's no good. Not very uh, good Triple H room. actually thought that Zelina Vega and Andrade were married in real life. He thought they were a couple. He didn't know that it was only in kayfabe. Who wait? wait and, who thought? Who was a couple? Triple H. He thought Zelina Vega and uh, Andrade were a couple. But how do we all know that they're not? And he doesn't. So know? she was talking, and uh, she she went ahead and she says that I remember when I first told Hunter that we were getting married. Her and Alistair. Oh, it was probably way back when. This is this is not too long ago. This is back when they got married. So, and he's like. You guys are getting married? Wait, so you and Andrade? And she said he was so confused. I was like, no, that's just storyline. He said, well, you had me fooled. And then he got all excited. He said, my babies are getting married. You know, and he got really happy and supportive. But the fact that they fooled him, they didn't, he didn't know that they weren't actually together. That kills me. That's fucking hilarious. How, how does he not know? Well, I, I guess if it was like a long time ago, like I, I would, I would get what you're like. I wouldn't know. I didn't know either. I was like, what? They're not fucking together. I thought they were fucking together. Well, my mic just decided to leave me. Come back. I got to fix that, man. The spring on this is fucked up. I got to turn it up. Going this, flying. It's a heavy fucking microphone, man. This thing is fucking heavy. This thing ain't Ask hold on. in his dumpster oh, shit. fire. Oh, it's Keith Lee. He's here. Bask in his dumpster fire. His dumpster fire. Bask in his dumpster fire. His dumpster fire. Look at that confidence on Keith Lee's face. He's robust. Fire. He's so robust. Greetings and salutations. Are you gonna fuck the guy or what? Greetings and salutations. I mean, are you gonna fuck the guy? Um, you know that might have been. That's one of the files I think that went missing again. I I I, I deleted. Oh, no. My computer had a fucking horrible update today. Robert Heller, thank you, Robert Heller. And yeah, like, you said you lost so much. Oh, wait, I found it. Updating forever. Yeah, I found like it. And, and I wasn't a big fan of his promo either, the Mr. Gentleman promo. Right. Type. He, Allow me oh. to introduce myself. Are you going to fuck the guy? <laughs> oh, shit. System of a Down drop new music. Oh, Are you, what the that. fuck? If that's true, I'm... Holy shit. Now. I never got to see them live. I had tickets at one point, and then oh. I wasn't able to go. I would kill to see them perform... You know, at least if they're a cohesive unit and actually like each other, then yeah. <laughs> but new I'll music from them would be dick. awesome. That's I, great. I well, any new music is good timing, man. A lot of new music. System of a Down's coming out with new shit. I got Stabbing Westward. I'm I'm pumped. Nobody gives a fuck about them, but I do. And it's like, yeah, I didn't like his outfit, and I wasn't a big fan of his promo either. The Mister Gentleman promo. Right. Type. He, Allow me oh. to introduce myself. Are you gonna fuck the guy? Or- Are you gonna fuck the guy? We got Conan coming on soon. We got K Dog coming on the show soon. Uh, it's gonna be great, man. We got the guys from um, fucking Compound Media coming on. We got a couple comedians coming on. It's gonna be a big next couple of weeks. That's awesome. Um, what? So what do we got left before we want to get into full gear predictions? I'm talking about brief stuff here. Okay. Mustafa Ali. Um, he goes on and, and you know really goes in depth here. 
uh, talking on After the Bell, saying uh, he was very candid, you know, and went on with his injury. He said at first, I thought it was just a black guy. A black guy? (laughs) And he thought he was good with just a black guy. Later that night, he had to go back out for the big melee finish, and Eric Rowan grabbed him by the face to do the claw choke slam on the table. He says, I remember laying on the table going, oh, systems check. I was able to get up, back on my feet, on my own. I feel fine. I'm okay. I get word for next week that I'm in a gauntlet match, and the plan is to make Mustafa Ali that night. So this is when he was going to go into the elimination chamber and go to WrestleMania, and that right. face injury that Orton initially gave him took him out. So to, to you know skip ahead, he says that um, this is what he's been working for his entire life, and then he's got a live event before the TV taping for SmackDown. He said there was a tag match. I take a turnbuckle, which I've taken a million times. I get to the back. I end up sitting Indian style right by Gorilla. I can't move. A ref walked by and asked if I was okay. I said yes. He went and got the doctor. Next thing I know, I'm sitting at the medical table. I'm gripping the edge because if I know if I let go, I'm going to tip over. The doc asked to see my hands, and when I did, I tilted over. I remember sitting in the hotel room that night crying because I knew there was no way they were going to allow me to perform on SmackDown. And that's when he was out for a while, and... You know, he lost his chance and he said that, you know, there's all these stories. There's a story with Randy. There's a story with Kofi. Even there's a story with Brock eventually. There's all these layups presenting itself. I came back and I was ready and there was nothing, you know, and I, I, I feel for him. I mean, we have retribution. We have the hacker gimmick and it just keeps going wrong for this guy. And I like him so much and he just seemingly can't catch a break unless it's his face. Yeah. It is kind of weird. It was we. I I don't think he was injury prone before all this though. So that's the one good thing, I guess. Yeah, no, it was just so. kind of a freak thing that happened. And on this after the bell podcast, he said that he was heavily edited because it was too hot for, you know, streaming in the sense he the higher ups would be mad at WWE. So he says you won't hear about me standing up for myself, backstabbing superstars, and so much more because it was too much. So enjoy. Damn. So that sucks if they really, I don't know if this is a marketing ploy, but it seems to be like they actually did edit stuff that he uh, spoke candidly about on the podcast. That's unfortunate if they are removing things from from after the bell because WWE is interfering in that. That's not good. If that's the truth. And then uh, WWE has... They have no plans. I had to grab a uh, water in my fucking throat. I couldn't speak. (laughs) I hate when that happens. They have no plans for title changes before Survivor Series. So some people are not happy with the matches, obviously. We've gotten Sasha Banks versus Asuka before. We've had it recently. So some people said, will WWE do a title switch to build to this? And so far, everything points to no. McMahon wants this card as it stands. Obviously, he can always change his mind because that's what Vince does. But as of right now, he went ahead and scripted this to that point. So right. That's the that's the matches he wants. You know, he wants Randy and, and Roman. He wants Sasha and Asuka. Uh, and fans are just groaning. <laughs> and how could they not? Especially when we could have had, you know, face Drew versus heel Roman or, or just so many different opportunities. And, and instead, we're getting more of the same. Yeah, I'm so sick of them. I mean, they're so fucking devoid of creativity and all that other bullshit they got nothing they got nothing there's nothing to talk about because they got nothing exactly i mean Liv morgan knows that because she's studying for a new career she says we all have the power to do anything we want and she's going to become a realtor in florida so good luck to her but i guess she kind of you know i see that i was dude i i was wondering why the hell she was trending a minute ago i was like why is she trending why the fuck is Liv morgan wwe trending and i'm because she has a plan b i guess she kind of is reading the writing on the wall knowing that hey doesn't seem like they're gonna make use of me much here and the fans were so behind her when she came back after her whole little makeover angle that didn't go the way yeah but then they yeah because then they brought her in as that fucking bimbo thing or whatever the fuck and then you know the fans were still behind her and she got destroyed in the elimination chamber showing a little bit of heart but still destroyed all of it so yeah at oh, least now God, she's dude. got a a backup a plan b she's like i'd like she- to sell you this house right here would you and then she she's going to be fucking all the husbands i wouldn't doubt it that's how you get the house sold yeah that's what i'm saying you got to get the you want to buy this house hey uh, ma'am go out to the back and check out the patio for a second 
Okay, I'll show your husband the uh, the bathroom. And then next, huh? I'm just kidding. Guys wish that was what was going on. Yeah, um, right. Uh, when I was mentioning uh, Zelina Vega and Aleister Black before, she was saying that Andrade was supposed to drop the belt to Aleister Black. And the fact that they were husband and wife was supposed to come up in the yeah. storyline and be addressed there. She said, because initially we were supposed to drop our United States championship. I like that she called it our title, you uh-huh. know, a real manager. Right. And she said, we were supposed to drop that to Alistair and we were going to add the element of my confusion into it. And it didn't end up happening, obviously. One got hurt and another one and another whole thing, she says. But I wanted to keep the reality of people believing that more than anything else. So it's, it's you know, that was her goal. But it never ended up working out. And they scrapped the plans for Alistair Black. So that's unfortunate to hear. Damn, that is fucked up. I mean, they, they were going to push him <laughs> heavily at one point in time. And then that backfired. Alistair Black, man. What a, what a fucking. All of these people had this stock rising up and rising up in NXT and then just fucking like that's what's happened with everybody they lose their music they lose their soul their real estate every single one of these people ends up just being anybody like these WWE guys anybody could be anybody that's all it is yeah like, they're they're interchangeable they don't have so you know like we said before they they don't really have a personality anymore they're they're known as you know their namesake and that's it they don't have any defining characteristics or anything that distinguishes them from from one another. Right. Yeah. It's just all, all their soul is gone. You could just go hire any indie wrestlers, just bring them off the streets and put them out there. And there are these characters. It's like Humberto Carrillo. I feel like he wasn't really built up a lot, but he got put out there too, like Mr. Generic, uh, flip floppy, uh, Hispanic guy. Like yeah, uh, Mysterio clone number, you know. Oh, here's Dark Soul guy, Alistair Black. You know, here's Retribution people. You know, here's this other guy. Here's big dude who squashes things. Braun Strowman. I'm big guy. Like it's all really like cookie cutter bullshit that sucks. And so like any thought or like hope that somebody's good or that somebody's gonna have some kind of fucking talent or like fucking be able to do anything is just out the goddamn window. Because they just treat everybody generically from the promos that are written by all the same people almost. So everybody's promos sound about the same. People speak with the same cadences and etiquette, et- like, uh, not etiquette, uh, whatever the fuck, dialogue, I guess. I don't know, it's very similar sounding. It's just so bad, man. I mean, you know, Impact Wrestling is better than WWE. You know, I don't even cover Impact Wrestling, but it's better. Because no, there's something going on. Impact EC3. He's done with Impact. <laughs> Already, he just be, walked off. Ring of Honor, in, he at just, least until the end of the year. Oh, okay, all right. Well, but that makes sense. You know, a little time in Impact. Go to Ring of Honor. I saw his entrance at Ring of Honor the other day. Nice, nice music. Nice package. I like it. Uh, I haven't, I haven't seen it yet. So, I did see, you know, his Down for Glory match that he had, but I didn't see anything with Ring of Honor. So. Mm-hmm. I saw the entrance. I watched their. It was. I like hadn't watched. I don't think I've watched a Ring of Honor video in like five months. And I was like, you know what? I'm gonna watch this. Yeah, because now they're doing you know a real sports based presentation, which is interesting. Ooh. Ooh. I'm not crazy about it, but I I appreciate what they're going for, and it certainly works better in the COVID era. So having no fans when you can present it more sports like, with you know different rules, you're only allowed to do so much at certain times and so many times. And I don't know enough about it, obviously, but it, they're trying to make it as sports based as possible. Oh, I want to give a shout out in case anybody has tickets or has the ability to get tickets. I will be Mr. Sexy Pants. No, I'm just kidding. One night only. Let's get the promo music. Where is it at? Where's the promo uh-huh. music? Bring it on. Where's the, well, wait a minute. Well, we got the video. Hold on a second. Wait a second. Hold on. Let me see here. Get the promo. Come on, Mark. You're supposed to be the new intern, you piece of shit. Give me the promo. Get Joe Cronin the promo now or I'm going to fuck your family. Come on. Get the fucking goddamn music, John. Oh, fuck. I don't think... um, I don't think I have. We're going to have to have another intern special Olympics challenge. I'm going to fire this intern. intern. I'm sick of these interns, man. I'm going to fire this guy. We we definitely need some new interns. Yeah, this is bullshit. Like you you can't get your shit together and get me the trailer. 
Like, do you know how hard I worked for this fucking thing? And you can't get me the fucking trailer? I really don't have it. I, I can't believe I don't have it. Another file down the drain that we got to find. Son of a bitch. Yeah, I think the file's gone. I think that's what it is. I think this is one of those Freaking fucking files. Windows updates. The only thing that happened to me was all my settings were reverted. Oh, wait a you second. Know, microphone and audio settings. Wait a minute, Jake. A miracle has happened. Uh oh, you Ladies found it. Ladies and gentlemen, a miracle has happened. New England All Star Wrestling debuts on iPay Per View Friday night, November 20th. New England favorite Eddie Goods meets Brian Pillman Jr. in a junior heavyweight division showdown. Plus, the end game Paul Jordan defends his title against Freak Beast Nick Camarado. Plus, a 10 man gauntlet match. Don't miss New England All Star Wrestling live on iPay Per View streaming Friday night, November 20th. For more information, visit TitleMatchNetwork.com. You heard it. If you are there, I will be there too, baby. I will be there too. I will be loving you all over the place. One night only, November 20th, 8 p.m. is the bell time. Paul's Teddy Goods Burrow. is fantastic in person too. Oh, yeah. I love Teddy. I love Teddy Goods, man. Uh, November 20th, 8 p.m. is bell time. Paulsboro, New Jersey. We're coming out to Jersey. And guess what? I'm coming for you, Grim. You fucking slob. I'm coming for you, Grim. I'm going to go invade Grimm's Toy Show, too, earlier in the day. I'm going to beat him up. It's going to be great. Um, Tim Goods was at a top rope promotion champion, correct? Yeah, oh, yeah, for a long, like a long time, like for a, a while. long time, so. Yeah, when I saw him the night of the Hardys, he was fantastic. He really stole the show. Teddy Goods beat Tommaso Ciampa's record. Really? Yeah, the, the, the record of longest reigning uh, top rope promotions heavyweight champion was Tommaso Ciampa. Teddy Goods beat the record. He had it for about two years, which is crazy. That's awesome. That's some fucking crazy shit. What do you do? Wait, JD, what's up, brother? He's back on Out of Nowhere, everybody. Hey, man, what's up, you fucking little midget? What's going on? I slay bitches er day. Oh, er day. Oh, what was it? Er day. Er day. I slay bitches er I slay bitches er day. I slay Checking bitches er day. Wait Checking on the latest election news, and uh, the world still has not fallen apart, so we're good. Okay. Both countries not on fire. We're good. We're still fine, everybody. Don't worry about it. We'll be all right. Listen to this, to Jake Ray. Listen to this. You're going to like this. I slay bitches er day. <laughs> it sounds like he's throwing up. <laughs> Let's do it again. Bring it on again. One more time. I slay bitches er day. <laughs> I slay bitches er day. I, I slay bitches er day. Sorry. Um, a little fun there. One night only. Uh, we'll be there. It's gonna be. That's gonna be a lot of fun. No doubt about that. The people want old dog. The people want the old dog. Uh-oh. Lewis, money. Road dog. Old dog. Come here, old dog. Come here, teach he an old dog. He took the time dog. machine back? Damn, I didn't know he was back so He's soon. He's back again. Hey, old dog, come here. I didn't know he was back already. I mean, God knows what he uses for fuel for that damn time machine but he gets himself to and from let's see old dog you there he is old so he doesn't know how to work technology you gotta bear with him what's up everybody it's me i'm back oh, there how he is doing? how you doing old is dog good oh, to you, have you back oh you didn't know Hit, where's my music joe jake play my music Sorry, our uh, our interns are slacking tonight. They're not on top of their my, game. Me, I mean, need my. Oh my God! I can't get my headphones on. I didn't. I'm a, Vince McMahon. I'm a spend my spend my day working hard on the go. Come on, hit me, hit, hit me, hit me with that music. Let me, let me just. Where, where, where is it at? There. 
both our producers and our interns slacking today. My God, I'm sorry, old dog. There we go. Come on, I can still do it. I can still do it. I was back there in front of Vince McMahon. Vince McMahon, he damn, he tried to suck me off, Jake. Did you know that? I did not know that. I knew he was uh, pretty uncouth with well, Ryback. I, but. I, let me tell you something, man. I, I spend my day working hard for Vince McMahon. He whooped my ass. You ever know that? And so it's an old dog. It's an O-L-D to the D-O-double-G. What's up, I believe everybody? he whooped your ass. I didn't know he tried to, to lick your ass, though. My it, One of the best things I ever did, uh, old dog ever did, listen, one of the best things I ever did in the WWF was when I used to do the butt butt pump handle slam. That was the best. When I used to butt, when I, when I forced another man to fornicate with me, and then I inserted myself into him. Did Vince tell you to do that? Oh, Vince, Vince would jerk off, I'll be honest. He, he'd jack off to me put like thrust it into another man's anus he used to love oh, so you did this as a, a just a surprise for vince oh yeah it was you know, a, a little, it was a big rib gotcha. you know it was a big rib and sometimes a lot of times the guy that didn't even know it was coming but after a while some of the boys they started to get they started to get a little bit you know uh hip to the game you know they, I, a guy like i think the only time i didn't do it was when bradshaw we're about to go out there old bradshaw goes you do that shit to me, I'll fucking kill you in the ring. You'll be the first yeah, man I'm, ever. I'm sure he'd clothesline your head straight off. So you no, you no rub your dick. It. You rub your dick anywhere near me in this match. I will fucking fuck you up. He said it. And I was on pills and stuff, and I said, hey, you know, <laughs> hey, whatever, you know, whatever. And I thought about I actually thought about doing it. I thought, hey, fuck him. You know, why is he so much better than everybody else? Everybody else gets in there and takes it. Takes it up the ass. You know, there's no HR back then. HR was if you fucked up, Pat Patterson come around and smack you in the nuts. Wow, uh, that sounds terrible. Yeah, it wasn't terrible for the boys. They laughed and they just had a bunch of grab ass. It was so, really so. That's how you deal with it in wrestlers court. It was real terrible for the fucking ring boys. They were the ones who would get forced down. Oh, we're all forced down. Yikes! Man. Oh yeah. That's hey, uh. Hey Jake. Spend my day working hard on the go. See, you mentioned pills, and I forgot. Yeah, at that time, you know, Sean hadn't shown you the, the ways of the Lord yet, but. This is back in the locker room. We used to throw the N-word around like you wouldn't believe. Nobody gave a fuck. Je Jesus, old dog. Yeah, I mean, everybody say You're it. You're not they, supposed to be saying that. Well, I didn't say it, but a lot of the Undertaker always say it. Undertaker, Taker, really? Taker be like, listen, and bomb this and that. It was crazy. I don't think Mark Henry would think highly one, of that one time he called two cold scorpio a, uh a, a, well you know a two black nincompoop if you know what i mean wow that's terrible a lot i of did not they, picture taker to be racist, racism but it from was a texas i guess it i guess it adds up it was a lot different time then man it was terrible to be honest and, and you know where i'm from nowadays in my future you know because i'm from the year 2052 uh we don't even say words like that at all if you say damn they lock you up. They lock you right on up. Really? Oh yeah. And if you if you were if you're a conservative, they kill you. Damn. Do you wipe your ass with seashells too? Oh yeah. No, but no way. We don't. Well, we don't use toilet paper no more. That's one thing we don't do in the future. I'll tell you that. No more toilet paper either. Oh, it's all no. just bidets. Oh no. Yeah. There was, there's only one bathroom everywhere too. So we save on the plumbing and the supplies and everything. Everybody just use the same toilet. It's all the same shit. Got to be a long line for that bathroom. There's a long line, and there's some interesting people in the line. Let me tell you. And if you go in before it's and it's and if you go in before a female, they always give you a stink eye look. If they give yeah, me, yeah, I it, believe it. Yeah, especially it, when the only food left is Taco Bell. Well, it's the bathrooms are different now. It's a different thing. A lot, some people have well, I guess you'd call it a colostomy bag. Some people just have them all installed up on their hip, and they put them I up on the side. Just, they just walk around, piss themselves. And when they get home, they just empty it like a trough. There you go. Just rip it Fucking, off and put a new yeah. one on. It's like a portable condom. There and you go. Everybody's happier because Vince is dead, too. Vince died back in 2030. So <laughs> really? We ain't got 2030? That. Oh, 
Yeah, Shane McMahon had a, has Parkinson's disease, uh, and Stephanie's doing okay though. She got a breast, yeah. she got a breast augmented, uh, but every so right now it's really Stephanie Triple H uh, running the deal, and uh, Shawn. Oh, so Michaels, they're running wrestling at this time. Oh yeah, Shawn Michael. Yeah, because of Shane's Parkinson's disease. Yeah, he's got something going on, but but yeah, he's fine he's though. He, he actually comes and hopping and shaking. Well, he's in charge of WWE Thunder Smash. Thunder Smash. Oops. Uh, oh. Uh, um, well, you know, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't think you were supposed to let that one slip. But well, th- I no. I don't know what you. I well, he's in charge of the. Th- I don't even know the names of the stuff no more. I don't even watch anymore. I'm still wa- all I ever watch. To be honest, I mean, I watch what everybody else watches, which is uh, WWA. 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 Yeah, huh, that's that's an interesting uh World Wrestling Acolytes. There. It's the it's it's basically the number one uh, show on TV right now. World Wrestling Acolytes. They wrestle you and then they fuck you. Damn, what well, that actually does sound It's a mix of sodomy, bondage and butt fucking. Is that on cable? No, it's well, no, it's on the Japanese network. Oh, okay. Everybody right, gets the Japanese network and uh, yeah, and everybody knows Japanese. I still want to hear more about this Thunder Smash. We all watch the Japanese channel. It's it's pretty good stuff. They're little people. But boy, I tell you what, oh, when God. they get mad, New Japan's out of business, too. That's a big thing. The owners of New Japan had a big child sex ring. They busted the child sex ring, and all the New Japan got shut down. There ain't no more New Japan. And wow. it's all, all it's all WWA and it was a, a Japanese man by the name of Noro Fukuyama and uh Fu, Fukuyama uh and also a guy a big Texas guy uh out there and somewhere in Houston and he's a rich guy and he started it with him and it's in Japan America and it's even really big in Germany Wow so the Germans and Japanese are both into WWA. That they got, I can't say too much about this new promotion, but they got this. Intense. They got this one new character, Jake, called Pirate Pirate Pussy, and and basically his finishing move is he he got a pirate, pirate sword. Pussy. Yeah, he says he has a pirate sword. He holds up the pirate sword and he goes, hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then when he does that, he kicks his opponent in the crotch, and he only yeah, and he only wrestles women. Oh. Pirate pussy. He's over. He's big time I, over. Yeah, I think I get the gimmick now. He rides I, a I laser ship work. down to the ring. The ship, the laser ship, the sails go up. The crowd goes fucking crazy. And it's, oh, my goodness, pirate pussy's here. It, it's, it's the future's a lot different. Anyway, I got to go. I got to go. Anyway, I'll see I, you I know. It's, it's way past your, your jello and bedtime, old dog. But thank you so much for coming by and, and letting us know about the future. My the, God. The, the best thing about the future is in the future you can buy a Chinese hooker for five bucks. Five bucks. Well, five bucks, or I guess it's five bucks in your. It's five kapurkers. We call them kapurkers. It's the new. It's, gotcha. it's, it's like new Bitcoin, currency. except it's futuristic. It's futuristic money measured in cum. All right, I'm out of here, everybody. Spend my day working hard on the go. Hands on the hourglass, spinning too slow. I can't wait to be alone with my baby. Wow, he even gets his music to take him away. Thank you, old dog. Safe travels in your time machine. WWA. Hmm. I'm going to have to check that out somehow. Maybe Old Dog can bring me back whatever they have in the future for content. It's not DVDs, that's for sure. I'll have to probably well, hook me up somehow. Old I Dog mean, I don't got know, quite the mouth on him, though. But, but, but I'm really mad because I've been talking to him for a long time. And I've been asking him, tell me the important stuff of the future. And he didn't tell me half of that. He just divulged yeah. all this shit to you. Well, we asked him things last time, and he didn't want to talk about the future at all. He said he'd get in trouble. But I think he's a little uh, higher drunk tonight because he's very well. That's what it is. Forthcoming. He he told he, he they don't have alcohol in the future. So he just told me he hasn't had whiskey in like fucking eighteen years. So he just had whiskey, and, wow. and so now now so all this stuff three is coming up. Yeah, he said he couldn't say anything. Now he's divulging everything to everybody. I don't think he's supposed to do that, but. The you know the bottom line is that I guess he hasn't had alcohol in like eight eight years. He might have said eight years, eight or ten years. They banned uh, alcohol in the future. Uh, anyway, what else do we got, man? Uh, we'll go to uh, the next well, the news. Maybe we I can guess. help New Japan release the children sooner. Well, you're <laughs> right about that. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Pocket Aces agrees. <laughs> what a Pocket Aces! Yeah, a lot of people have been waiting for Pac. Yeah, a lot of people are so excited about Pac. I mean, I am too. I'm sure you guys are. Super oh! chat. 
party. Yo, Randy Viper. Guys, buy Croning Club t-shirt. Sent you pick on the Joe. Oh, thank you, Randy Viper. Randy Viper, you bought uh, you bought one of my shirts, baby. I love it. Thank you, brother. Hell yeah. I'm always, I'm always really like, dude. I'm always blown away when I see one of you guys buy a t-shirt and you're like wearing it and you send me a picture of it. It's pretty cool. It's really cool, man. We sold over. I mean, I don't sell nearly what other people sell. You know, I don't do nearly what other people do, but I think I've sold about 400 or so t-shirts now in total for the last six years, and pretty crazy, man, for me. Absolutely. So, and yeah, Melissa, I wanted to know if AEW is around still too, but old dog, you know, he just you got to let him whatever information he wants to divulge. We don't we don't ask too many questions. We don't. Yeah, we try to keep it limited. Otherwise, he says if we set stuff off, like there'll be a future traveler who'll come and like the police, they have time interdimensional Super police. Yeah, time cops. Yeah. There's the Cronin Party. Club T-shirt, baby. Paid fifty bucks for the shirt. Dot Joe, watch Boku no Pico. Oh my God, bro! Because you're in New Zealand. Yeah, it was probably like twenty. Damn. It was twenty five bucks for the shirt, and then twenty five bucks to ship it. I bet. Holy <laughs> shit! The dude. shirt was a dollar fifty. It was forty eight bucks to. Get oh it my there. God, dude! No, Australia and New Zealand, their shipping is fucked. It's insane sweet just the prices in general for video games and anything entertainment wise it's so expensive oh there. yeah just shipping anything over there is ne- ne- never mind just shipping just purchasing things if you live there as a citizen you know just to buy a, you know video games they're almost double price at some well, point that's why they're double price because the shipping it costs the company twice as much to get it there so they got to charge more for it well even on like digital downloads and things well that's not doesn't just make, physical media that doesn't make any sense I know it's it's crazy, but why are they? I mean, I know they're they're a pretty rich area, I guess, but like, what the shit? I I'm not educated enough in that field, so I'll stay in my lane. But I, you know, I I have a couple of friends I used to play, you know, Call of Duty and things like that over there with, and they would bitch about it being, you know, almost twice what I paid. I don't understand that at all. Holy hell, man, that's crazy. Speaking of numbers, the third hour of Raw this week Yikes. brought in the lowest third hour lowest viewing hour of all time they had a 1.455 that is uh, just dismal that is awful you know i i was not entirely shocked because the show was so bad they didn't announce anything for the main event and then the main event ended up being a handicap match you know with the miz and morrison taking on drew that no one really gave a damn about so I, I don't blame fans at all for turning away. Monday Night Football was still on. The game was, you know, coming down to the wire. There was better choices than, obviously, Raw at that point. Oh, yeah. Now, the show pulled an overnight average of a 1.656, but still, that third hour drew 1.45 million viewers. That is the lowest in history. Unbelievable. And you nailed that, so. Yeah. Uh, I forgot about that. Good prediction. Um and last thing I'll get into before we get to the predictions here is uh, top WWE superstars, they say, uh, prefer scripted promos instead of improvising them. Ugh. So there's a few people. Uh, you know, Now, this is coming from ringside news, so take it with a grain of salt, obviously. But they said they've been told that The Miz, while his lines seem off the cuff, loves being scripted. He, you know, he, he gets used to uh, his acting roles, and he said he's comfortable Well, that's having- why... He's boring a lot of times because he's just kind of going through the motions. He's good at it, though. He's one of the good ones at it. Yeah, he's better at delivering scripted lines, but but I don't I don't know though because he prefers the lines that are written for him because he doesn't like to improvise. But he did a great job improvising on Smack Talk or whatever the fuck it was. Yeah, I, I even that apparently was planned to a certain extent right. when he went off on Daniel Bryan. Well, some people are better at it. Oh, absolutely. And some people can improv their ass off. I, I, you know, you're amazing at improv. I'm not great at it. My brain doesn't think fast enough for me to, you know, come up with things on the fly. That's why you can, uh, you know, just, just doing like freestyle raps and stuff. I, I would have to be scripted and I'm the same way. Yeah. They even said that Haley and Sasha Banks, uh, they don't improvise. They have a lot of input on their segments, but same thing with the street profits. They work really close with their writer. But I was surprised to hear that because, and, and that's something I've heard a while ago too. That that's not new. That the street profits like being scripted and they work close, you know, in giving their input. Yeah, and I get that. I think they should try to lean towards what somebody's better at. But 
This, I mean, man, if there's not more people that can do like an Eddie Kingston, no, wrestling's no. going to be Moxley, in trouble. Even Moxley, the promos he cuts, and yeah. Uh, you know, they said uh, Ford and Dawkins appear to have a more relaxed presentation, but their lines are still written for them. So right. uh, a lot of those lines are penned by Kevin Dunn. Go figure. That that, that does figure. <laughs> hey, let me so, tell you about my teeth, brother. No, I'm kidding about that. But um, yeah, uh, that was it for pretty much everything that I had at this point. So we'll get into full gear predictions. Let's go Nine full matches gear. in total. Going to be a hell of a show. <laughs> Hopefully it's not a seven-hour show, as I said before. But oh God! We'll see what they plan. I, I believe it begins at the actual pay-per-view starts at eight. I believe on. Oh no! I was hoping it started at seven. I think the buy-in starts at seven. Okay, so seven, eight, so the nine, pre-show, ten. and then the actual show from I think it's eight to midnight. I mean, oh my God, that sucks. Cause because last time it was like eleven thirty. I'll be ended, dead right? uncorrupted. I'll be dead uncorrupted. So. Corrupted and podcast, the last one was like all out was three and a half hours, I think three hours and some odd minutes. So, was, and that was after, so it was like eight to eleven oh, thirty, whatever Lord. it was. Full gear. But uh, starting off, we have Orange Cassidy versus John Silver. Um, well, I think this is an Orange Cassidy win. It'll be a quick kind of match, and uh, that's about it. Nothing big. Just to try to keep. Orange Cassidy on the map and give him some win back. I'm going to disagree with you here. I think they're going to go with John Silver because they're kind of making a little bit of a big deal about him lately. He's he's really gotten himself over within the Dark Order and and with the fans siding with him with his antics on BTE. Yeah. They, him and Alex Reynolds even have their own merchandise saying like Dark Order recruitment. You know, they're, they're building up his namesake. Yeah, and I can see the Dark Order causing some type of distraction or interference here that leads to Silver getting the win and this feud continuing. I definitely agree with you that he should that Silver should probably should win, right? Because of how they're trying to build him. But I don't know. I'll stick with Orange Cassidy for the fun of it. But uh, he's the midget yeah. guy. John Silver's the midget, right? He's the one, the, the shorter guy with the bald head and the, the big midget. arms. The midget. Yeah. Okay, just say the midget. No, I'm, just, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Oh, fucking. <laughs> uh, then we have Serena Deeb, who is the current NWA World Women's Champion, taking on Allison K. Um, gotta gotta go with Deeb. Yeah, and I'm gonna agree with you just because she just won the title, and this is her first defense, I believe. Yep. Unless she's, I don't think she's defended it since winning it from Thunder Rosa. And this, if not still, it's it's such a you know short amount of time since she's captured it. I don't think that she will drop the title this soon. Anyways, they have plans with Serena. It seems like going forward. So, uh, NWA, I'm saying. Oh yeah. Uh, it, it's great that you know AEW was able to have this match though because their women's you know division yeah. is in dire straits. So this certainly boosts and bolsters what they have to offer. Right, because that other match could go just nothing. So hopefully this one is good. Yeah, uh, that that's actually next. We have Hikaru Shida taking on Nyla Rose, who is being accompanied by Vicky Guerrero. Shida is defending her AEW Women's Championship, obviously, here. Uh, I keep flip-flopping with this one because, we you know, we saw Riho, then Nyla, then Shida. Then, like, it's, it's just kind of been between those three, and it's been back and forth. I, I could see it going back to Nyla Rose very easy. The thing is, they don't have anybody else really built up at this point in time to go for the belt. So it, it, I can see them having an easier time with a face going after the belt than trying to build up another big heel. So I, I'm going to go with Nyla Rose winning here. Yeah. <coughs> huh. This is a rough one. Okay, it is. Jonathan Hunter says this is her second title defense. Okay. So <coughs> thank you. That's why I said I wasn't sure, but. Um, and, and yeah, AEW should sign Allison K. That would be a, a great get for them, no I, doubt. I think Sheeta's going to pull it off somehow, and she's going to win. I think Sheeta's going to retain the belt. I, I could see that as well, so it's not a bad pick. Yeah, it's hard to pick this one. It, it is hard, though. So, And they've really tried to make Nyla look more intimidating recently, You know, especially the go-home show. They had her being more confrontational, and uh, I... I'm not so sure, but we'll see what happens. Yeah. 
yeah, Kay's a free agent, but Serena Deeb's not a free agent. So, right? I didn't they, think they, no, they signed they signed Deeb. They signed her. Yeah. So, but, but yeah, she Kay's has free agent. But Serena Deeb, they have plans for it. So, but that's they, what I was saying. but she has the NWA title. It's so weird. Like, what the yeah. hell? It's bizarre. Uh, next up after that, we have Matt Hardy versus Sammy Guevara in the elite deletion match. And I love the way that Jericho sold this on commentary the other night. He he really made it sound special because, you know, there's been elite de- uh, deletion matches in other companies. And he made sure to mention that, you know, it's happened elsewhere before, but never in AEW. So this is a first for them. Apparently, they're going all out with this match. They want this to end the feud. Therefore, I think that it has to be Matt Hardy winning here. I would want Sammy to go over since I think he would benefit more from a victory here. Matt doesn't really need this. Right. But how can you have Matt Hardy lose the match that is his, the deletion match? So he hasn't lost a deletion match yet. I don't think he will. I'm going to pick Matt. So they're going to shoot it like a deletion, you think? You think this is going to be filmed all fucking crazy and whatever? And they're going to have like edits and film and... I think it's going to be more akin to what we saw with WWE's deletion match. Not as theatrical, but along that line. So we're going to get a bunch of different scenes somewhere. I would love it if they did it at Hardy's you know, compound, but what if they I haven't did it heard at the football field? about that. What if they did it on the football field and he had all the fireworks and he like kicked the football into his head and all just all <laughs> kinds of crazy shit, but it, was like, but it was more dark. It wasn't as fun as the last time when they had the golf cart and it was all daylight, but it's more like yeah. a deletion. Like it would have to be at night, but no, maybe Hardy compound. What if they did Hardy? That compound? would be great. If that was the case, I, I haven't seen no any, word, no word on yeah, that. Nothing about it yet. And I've, I've yeah. asked a few people, I looked around, I haven't heard anything about it. So, but yeah, I mean, a few people in the chat even said, how great would it be? You know, the lake of re- reincarnation, Elijah said, have Sammy go in there and now he becomes a face at the end. If he wasn't in the inner circle and they didn't have that story, I mean, maybe he could be a face in the inner circle. Oh my and god! What if story he, with that? What if he came out and he thought and he was Jeff Hardy, <laughs> <laughs> and he start, he came out of the lake and he and he's like, Sammy, like Sammy, you okay? What? what? And then Sammy's just like, <gasps> he's not doing this. Like, <laughs> <laughs> he just loses Brother, it. Brother, Neil, Nero, you're here, and he's like, and he's like, and he just starts doing the Jeff Hardy stuff, and he follows around Matt Hardy now as Jeff Hardy. Like, <laughs> and he's like, and he just starts doing the Jeff Hardy stuff, and he follows around Matt Hardy now as Jeff Hardy. Oh my I'll god! Away and cl- yeah, <laughs> holy fucking <laughs> that god! Great. Would that be funny? And he's he's basically Jeff Hardy, but he's not. But he is for a, for a short term. Oh my like, god! Laugh. I think that'd be great. Not nothing long term, but that would be funny. <laughs> I hope they do something at the compound. That would be. It is at the compound. <laughs> Steven says. Oh, that's great. If that's the case, oh, Matt man. tweeted it's at the compound. Oh, oh excellent! Yeah. All right. So we Hell can yeah. do it. Let's go. Sammy Guevara becomes yeah, Jeff excellent. Hardy. Brother Nero. Oh, wait, wait a minute. What's, um, what's, well, Nero is kind of a Greek word, right? The Greek god or a, or a god or a Roman, something like that. So, otherwise, I was going to say, what's the word for that in Spanish? You know, <laughs> like, Nero no. Yeah, Nero was a, a Roman emperor. Roman. It's a oh. Latin word or something like that. So, it wouldn't be any different, but you know what I'm getting at. That'd be funny. Yeah. Yeah. Find the translation. Uh, then we Brother have Hombre. Chris Jericho. Taking out? Oh no! Who did, did you pick your winner for that? I'm sorry. Oh, you said um, Matt, right? I don't think he's lost one, like you said. So yeah, I would. Yeah. I'd go with Matt. Yeah, I guess Matt would have to win. I wouldn't pick against him in a deletion. Yeah, it kind of seems that you know, like betting against. But the what I don't is like is, I, <laughs> but what I don't like is, I wish he would had been the character already. Like, I why know. is he having a deletion when he's not even that character? When he's not broken, it feels just bizarre or is he i mean and even if he is broken in the deletion why like why isn't there this ex- explanation of why his brain is changing people and stuff like i i would just so much more appreciate if there was a reason that you i know it's stupid it's wrestling we're talking about fucking no but it, it does it, it, it adds to the story that's why i am so excited for the actual championship match because there's so much story in there and so much heart and you know it just so much passion between these two. So uh, that's that's what makes it that much more interesting. Let me see what he's saying. I, I don't blame you at all. I haven't looked at his uh, YouTube, so... No, I haven't. Last last time I was checking all that was last night when I pulled up the card, so... He didn't... Three days ago, he said multi... Or now that my return to the ring 
and the battlefield is imminent. It's time for me to get back in ring shape. It's time for me to get in bump shape. A matter of fact, Matt is entering his 28th year as a professional wrestler. Quite impressive. Most men don't have the magnitude to have that type of longevity. That shit's cringe. He just really needs to go broken, man. That character is the shit. And we have been making a video of the music, and today the shooting has been practically perfect. I love it. And stay tuned, Ruckus' follow-up single, Ghost Town, is coming soon. There's a tweet that he retweeted. It was at 7 p.m. tonight, so I did, that's the one I missed it. He said, when you enter the gates of Hardy Compound, things change forever. Watch yeah. the countdown to AEW Full Gear tomorrow at 11 Eastern on TNT. They have their special. So I was going to let the chat know about that as well. If you don't know that, uh, they are having a special like preview for Full Gear. It's just going to recap you know, all the stories and, and whatnot. But it looks like it'll be interesting. But he shows the gate of the Hardy Compound closing and, and whatnot. So that's great. I'm glad it's at the Hardy Compound. That'll, that'll at yeah. least make it that much better. I'm only liking it because of the nostalgia, how much I like 2016 when he was broken. I, well, not even just that, but I think they can probably be more creative than what they could do at Daly's place. And WWE, and yeah, I mean, I just hope it's good, man. I hope it's good. It was, uh, the WWE one was like, nah, that was all right. But the... Man, yeah, they, I, a lot of people seem to like that more. I really didn't care for that. There was a few parts with like Bray that I, I chuckled with, but all in all, I, I didn't care for that deletion. Right. The one that him and Wyatt had, it just, it it felt like just a, a total copy. It didn't feel original. It didn't feel inspired. The stuff, Alex, Kinda, the stuff Alex Jones is doing tonight is fucking insanely funny. 1776 chance going strong with Alex Jones going nuts. <laughs> Um, should we wait for the full gears predictions? You want to do them tomorrow and just wait? Well, we we got through half of them. I don't know if you want to get through the rest, but no, I mean, I think we should tomorrow. just let's just wait. Just all right. We'll 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 bait the we'll chat. Continue We've got four tomorrow, matches guys. To finish we'll for the title matches tomorrow. <laughs> I'm kidding. Come on, right, go ahead. No, I'm joking, bro. Go ahead. <laughs> hey, you're supposed to make them sweat. Come on. I know. I wanted to see the chat react. Be like, I really no, do. You're I gotta go me. to bed though. Now it's come on. <laughs> All right, we got John Moxley versus Eddie Kingston <laughs> in the I Quit match for the AEW World Championship. I'm picking fucking Eddie Kingston. End the story. Eddie, I'm sure it's wrong, but I'm picking it. Hmm. Wow. Hmm. I think and Lorenzo, I, I, you're right. Yeah, it is awesome that he's had a match for a deletion match in TNA, WWE, and AEW. That's, that's I, yeah, that is kind of awesome in a way. It's too bad the character is kind of dead, but that's I, what Jericho was putting over the other day that I appreciated. I would. I'm going to go with Moxley. He is going to retain. I wish Eddie would take it because he'd be so much more interesting. Um, but I'm going to pick Moxley only because I think Eddie's kind of like the next guy up thing, and they're waiting. So I'm going to go with Moxley. But if Eddie wins, I'm going to mark out because now I like Eddie a lot, and I and I'm not as into Moxley at all. I, I want Eddie to win. I don't think he's going to win, honestly. I, I'm sure they'll have Moxley retain. Right. They have so much invested in him. But I would I would lose my shit if Eddie Kingston wins. I don't know, Elijah. You said that before. You know, Lance Archer, does he maybe Maybe play Tony a part Khan. What if, I don't think so. What if Tony Khan, what if Eddie Kingston is about to kill John Moxley? And that's when Tony Khan comes out and says, stop, stop it, stop the match, stop, you're the whatever you win you know you're, and, you win you're the champ you're and the he's champ. like yeah, i am like not panicked. you're the champion i'm sorry john if you're we got to get a medical attention right now and he's like listen i'm not going to be blamed i'm not going to be in trouble for i'm not going to lose this. my company because he can't yeah. he's too stupid to say i quit yeah, yeah something like that i'm not yeah. going to lose it john no, over, no, no, no. over you being stubborn and then and then and then they go with the whole tony khan's the evil vince mcmahon character I'm I'm thinking screw finish too. Castropolis said it. You're yeah. kind of leaning at it, and that's I, when. <sighs> and then Tony Khan announces the next uh, dynamite. A Eric Bischoff is the new general manager under his guidance, or something like that. Two for two. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I it certainly feels like we're going to get some type of screw finish here because I just can't see either guy saying I quit, and I don't think they really are going to go the recorded 
tape recorder, you know, playing somebody saying I quit angle, but you never know. No, I think they'll go with the getting the heat on Tony a bit and then him passing that off to Bischoff. That's what I would do, but that's just me. Yeah. I mean, Pac could show up right for that because that's that's uh, the next great match to have next feud. Moxley and Pac for the, you know, for the title. Yeah. But Kenny Omega's the next in line or Hangman Adam Page because they're going for the final Eliminator Tournament final match. So who do you think wins? I, I'm, I want Page, but I'm saying Kenny Omega wins. Mm. Yeah, I'm going Kenny Omega. It's got, I mean, it's... It just seems like they've built to, to yeah. that so strongly. Yeah, it sounds like they're taking Kenny to another level. And although Adam Page is at a level you would think he would be going up, I think he's okay, and I think they're going to just bring up uh, Kenny a little bit. It's going to be a big – it could be a really good match. So, Yeah. Uh, Festlove says that Eddie Kingston becomes champ, so Kenny Omega can take it from Eddie instead of Mox. Ooh. But then again I – mean, Even, if, even they, if Eddie had a short run with it, I'd be okay, so long as he got to be the champion finally. Yeah, but they have good chemistry, Mox and Kenny, and that was such a good match that – Well, well, then Moxley will want the belt back. Kenny will be champion, right. and Moxley will hunt him, so it kind of – yeah. Yeah, they have Could a lot work. of options then, as long as nobody gets yeah, hurt. They, they, they do have a decent amount of options right now. Brian Cage is up there still. I mean, yeah, that's good. That's good. Yeah, it's they're in good shape, you know. And I think and, the and TNT they're title. They're not beyond, you know, repair or approach with any of the talent that they have. They really can fix just about anybody in a, in a few weeks' time, I think, there. It doesn't take all that long. They're not, there's nobody that I view on that roster right now that's ruined to me, that's truly beyond any type of help. As where I look at WWE and there's a few people that I just have no interest in whatsoever. No matter, they could light themselves on fire and throw themselves into a you know sparkler pit, and I'd be like, yeah, it's just it's like Braun Strowman. There's nothing they can do to save him in my eyes. He's he's just a Big walking talking dumbass. Moron. I'll tell you what I'll do with these hands. I'll stuff them up my own asshole. I'm gonna they, go they hunt a deer and shoot a gun. Flipping you know, face heel, face heel stuff with him and trying to be, you think Joey Janela can't be fixed? I don't know. Cause him and Sonny kissed having that tag team, they were having a pretty good run and that was rather simple. The vignettes that they were showing with them on the road trip was fun yeah. to me. He so. can be fixed, but he's not, he's been, he's pretty low in the he's, totem pole. Yeah. He's, he's low down. There's a few people that are, you know, down low, especially Luther. All right, Luther. Luther screwed. Thank you, TSS. You called my bluff. Oh, dude, Luther. <laughs> yeah, Luther is fucking. I didn't consider Luther. I was actually talking about real wrestlers, but hey, all right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, we have FTR, the tag team champions, taking on the Young Bucks. Second to last match here. If the Young Bucks lose, they will never challenge for the AEW World Tag Team Champions again. Tully Blanchard is also banned from ringside. I'm gonna say the Young Bucks. How could they not? It, it's just, it seems to be, that's what they have planned here. I, I can't see them and Cody, not like, what are they going to have? Everybody in the elite not be able to go and uh, challenge for titles anymore? It, it just doesn't yeah, seem feasible. This, the, so I don't, I, I'm going to say the Young Bucks take it here. Yeah, that whole thing is stupid. So I don't. I hate that that's even on the line because I think it just gives it that away. That ruins it for me. It, honestly, it, it gives but. it away, or if they lose, then that's even dumber. So that's just all stupid. Yeah, I Daniel Price is right. FTR openly announcing in an interview they're not happy with the build. They said it's a bad look, and I heard that as well. So. Yeah, well, that's what I said. I go there. It's funny because they're in AEW now. This is kind of what they complained about in WWE. They're doing it here. And they just get the belts and everything, and then it's whatever. It's yeah, the, yeah. They it, just threw the belts on them, kind of just like here, dude. They're wicked. I mean, they had a good match, but they won quickly, and then they're gonna lose it right after. You and know? they're wicked anal too. They're super anal about like, like they're like Bret Hart anal about everything needing to be perfect, and it's all about them. And ooh. and so like, if it's not perfect, they get all grumpy. And, like, they kind of just won the belts, like, boom, and now they have them, and then the Young Bucks are going to beat them, and it's like, wow, you already wasted this feud that really wasn't built like it should have been. Like, this feud should have been like, oh, my God, they're facing off. And it This never... is supposed to be a dream match scenario. And, and, dude, and just think about it. They came in, oh, my God, Young Bucks, FTR, here we go. Wait, they're on each other's side, or they're helping each other, they're not going to fight, and then they are kind of going to fight, and now they're not going to fight, and now they are going to fight. fucking nailed it. And then on top of that... Oh, the Young Bucks now go heel. 
oh, but now the Young Bucks are heel, but FTR is heel. But now the Young Bucks aren't heel, and now they're getting sympathy on the Young Bucks. What? And now the Young Bucks act heel again, but now they get sympathy on them again, and now they're going to have a match. What the fuck are you doing with this build? Like, retarded. so weird and totally asinine, and it made no sense at all. Like you said, having them alternate between face heel, face heel, face heel, they should have been full on, like, red, white, and blue, red baby faces here in the sense of, yeah. you know, they, they should have been the ultimate sympathetic duo. You should you should adore the Young Bucks and absolutely be on their side for the everything. And dude, we should loathe and hate FTR. The story the, should have been, like, passion. you guys just care about flip-floppy, like, stupid shit. And you don't care about rules. You don't care about, like, they should have, the FTR should have acted like Donald Trump. FTR said, you're going to cheat. And they should have shown all the times in the ring, you know, where the where the rules weren't admonished the right way. And then, you know, Young Bucks agreed to this, like, whatever the fuck. And they're, like, they make a big deal out of, like, we would win legitimately with all the, the real wrestling rules. We wouldn't need a referee to take it easy on us. We wouldn't need none of that. We tagged the right way. We are like wrestling technicians. You guys are reckless and stupid, and we're going to show you how stupid you are and how stupid you look. On so You never wrestled anybody like us. We're from a different era. Your era, like everybody's soft, and, they're, and they're, they're, you've got it down to a pat. You've suckered people into your style, but this style is really wrestling. This is what really gets the job done. This is why we're so dominant. People like the Horsemen and people like that figured it out in the 70s and in the 80s how to beat people like you because wrestlers did act like you back in the 60s and the 50s and back in the day. They were doing all kinds of aerial maneuvers all over the place, but technical wrestling wins every time, and that's what the Horsemen found out. That's what guys like Arn Anderson found out. Power, Damn. cunning, skill, brains, and technique in the ring. That defeats the circus act any goddamn time, and that's what we're going to do to you boys. And all you care about is your little families and your little slogans and the little money shoots out and whatever else. You know what I mean? We've wrestled the best in the world and all that stuff. That's what it all should have been about, and then maybe and then they played dirty, and then they got dirty, and then the Young Bucks were the ultimate faces. But instead, the Young Bucks, every time they turned heel or acted heel, even though they were, I guess, face, but now they're acting heel, every time they were doing that, it took away the shine of what FTR was doing. So FTR is trying to do this whole we're the tough guys back and we're the champs and we're the bad guys, but then super kicking good guys like it takes a, like, what is going on and now now we're gonna break their legs oh so now we're supposed to like FTR what the hell the fuck are you doing? Sorry, I just, this is retarded. No, but you're it's spot on because I I've said this for weeks now them super kicking people and paying fines and having FTR be bullies that aren't bullies because they're only bullies when pushed so they're really not bullies it was it was so random and, and just not well delivered Dude, at it's all so weird like what is the story behind that like can we get N jackson brothers on fucking a podcast what in the fuck was the story behind that I, what I was agree, the Daniel point that all they had to say was seven words let's see how the elite handled defeat i mean that they didn't need to say much at all but like you said even the promo you just made for them Fantastic. Have them be the no flips, just fists wrestlers that they say they are, and they could have put limits on the match. No top rope, no flip, you know, and they could have put all these stipulations on the match in the sense of that, like, you know, all these parameters. That yeah, could have even just, worked. Just but. the idea, too, of, yeah, oh, my God, look, look, the like, how good would the story be if the Young Bucks weren't doing so well in the beginning of the match, and then they tried to change it up and do more of a technical style and they were losing at that. And then it was like, look at this. The Young Bucks are clearly changing up what they do. This doesn't look like a Young Bucks match. They're trying to adapt to what FTR is doing. And it's like, well, that's what they should be doing. It's like, yeah, maybe you're right, but I've never seen them do that. They've been in the ring with some people who do have a technical background like this, and I, and they don't, they don't change it up. They keep to their uh, style, and they win. But they're playing into FTR. All the stuff FTR has been saying about how they wrestle and how they do it, and... The Young Bucks are trying to show them they can do it too, and that's that's hindering them. They're being suckered right now by FTR. And then it's in the end, they, they, they started coming back, and then they went into the flips and started doing the crazy shit to them, and then it was working. And then they, they, they beat them with a wrestling move or something, like a more wrestling way to win. And it was that would be the story, you would think, the technical skill versus this new wave of wrestling that the Young Bucks have created. That's what it should be. Like It's like, that's the story. Why the fuck is the story the Young Bucks are super kicking people for whatever reason and FTR just seems like douchebags 
but now FTR is going to break their legs, I guess, and now they're going to wrestle. It's just oh, so confusing. Whatever. Seth Negan also says, I would not be a bit surprised to see AEW create a TNT tag team title or bring back the United States tag team titles next how, year. How about just the TV tag team titles or something like that? But no, we that don't would need work, no more. No I, more I don't even want to see that. Honestly. No more belts. No more belts. No more belts. I mean, it could work in theory because they do have so many tag teams, but I don't know. Um, I, I would stay just as the belts they have now. If they add another show, or they made it, they could they could make a belt for dark. I think that's a good idea, like their own TV title just for the dark program. At least it gives people a thing to fight for over there. Or if they wanted to have like dark tag belts, and because dark they use as their kind of you know development and test grounds for indie stars, and so that they can have people come and adds a bit of more intrigue and storylines like they've been trying to present. So yeah. that might be something to consider. But what else we got? Uh, last match, Cody Rhodes, finally again, the TNT champion with Arn Anderson and the Nightmare family taking on Darby Allen. Oh, so real two quick, questions for this. Real Who quick, wins and does Sting show? Real quick, someone in the chat mentioned hardcore belt. Just turn the FTW, fuck the world title, turn that into the hardcore belt. That's it. Yeah. Uh, change the belt, call it the FTW hardcore championship or something like that. No, um, take the FTW belt and make it the Cracker Barrel Hardcore Championship. <laughs> Sponsored by Cracker Barrel. Uh, I'm sorry. Okay, so yes. Um, wh- go Cody back. and Darby. I, I'm i going first, and I'm uh, I'm going to say Darby Allen, stupidly. Um, I, I don't... I, I'm going on a weird little gut feeling here, only because of, of what I think they want to... Where they want to go post this match here, I think that they can... Get more with Darby being the champ, but Ooh, that's, that's a lot of title changes if if I'm going that, that way. It is a wild thing. Like Cody is the champion for so long. Brody Lee beats him, has a mini run. Well, Cody comes back, wins it right back. Cody faces. Darby. It was just while Cody was filming that show. So, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't know. It's so weird. Maybe they didn't want you know Brody to lose to Darby, but maybe Cody can lose to Darby. And especially uh, with the way that he's already faced Darby and they've built this up, you know, they, they weren't sure of you until I showed them that you could fight, you know, all that kind of stuff. So basically Cody in a heel way saying, I made you to Darby. Um, yeah, maybe is, is, um, everything about that promo, like I said the other night, screamed heel. Super chat party. Remember Cody Rhodes said shock factor is out the window. Yeah, that shit was hilarious. Then they brought it on, the shock factor. Where is Brody Lee? No match? No, nothing. No match. No, he hasn't been in... I, I don't even know, have we seen him since he lost the title? I no. don't think, right? No, haven't seen him. So maybe they're doing something big there with some type of story where, you know, if he finally comes back and... Because Dark Order hasn't had him in weeks, so... Juan G. Juan, what's up, man? Thank you for bringing that up, and thank you for the four ninety nine, my friend. All right, that's about it. I'm hoping that the show, I, I'm hoping coming out of the show saying it was an eight or a seven, five or an I, eight. I hope at least a seven minimum, yeah. you know, because All Out wasn't terrible by any means, but it wasn't at what we hoped it would be. It certainly didn't live up to expectations. I really hope this, this show sells. And Oh, did you think Sting is going to show? Oh, Sting showing up. I'm going to say no. Oh. I'm with you in saying no. Yeah. Oh, no. Oh, oh, gotta go. Did you see that parrot thing? <laughs> we got that fucking parrot shits. What the fuck is wrong yeah, with everybody? The, the the pink thing there? Yeah, and it just shits. We got it. We got the it. The kids love it. They're like, yeah. And then it goes. Poop you, slime. You put stuff in it, and then it goes, oh, I gotta go to the bathroom. Like, it's like, oh, oh, gotta go. <laughs> oh, oh, gotta go. And then he goes, and then he craps. It's like, dude, what My the niece fuck wants are these that toys? Desperately. Dude, that's we know how. That's how you know we've all gone retarded. Like, I mean, I mean, we had baby make a mess when we were kids and stuff, but they've just it's really gone off the fucking rails at this point. Ha, ah, Drew, there you <laughs> go. All, all the toys have only gotten worse. Unfucking believable. All right, Jake Demarco at Countdown ended on Twitter. I'm at JCS Commentary on Twitter. This is out of nowhere. Thank you uh, for being here, and we will see you. Tomorrow, for monetize this. Oh, no.
Corrupted Nation. Corrupted Nation. Subscribe and become a patron if you want the show to keep going. Or I'm going to go get a couple of real jobs. Patreon.com slash Joe Cronin Show.